Right, yeah, if he only used perfect things, like, ev literally every single thing would have to go through his son, which it does, but, like, in the sense that we're talking about, you like, it, oh. yeah. What, what if what? God <laughs> grabbed hold of this thing and decided, I'm going to make it work? Like, that, that's actually a, a wonderful thing. You actually see it in the Old Testament a lot, too. You were kind of talking to me about this before we started recording. And you pointed out that a lot of our Sunday school stories are not entirely honest with the characters, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Like, okay, so everybody knows the story of Noah, like, and... Bingo. Everybody's happy, no problems during or after, right? None whatsoever, except for that Noah had a drinking problem. So there's that, and God still used him. Like Abraham, he needed children. He was too old. God still used him. Well, and let's just not just say too old, um, but like Abraham, I don't have a nice way of saying this. He, he prostituted his wife. He pimped his wife out. That's, That's not true. That's a sin. Um, and yeah. God not only forgives Abraham, for Abraham believed and was counted to him as righteousness, as the Bible says, but um, that, that Abraham was actually used by God to, to bring about good things. And then we get to, to sort of grab hold of this, this really nuanced thing that most people hate because it's nuanced and that's not tweetable, um, but that it's not okay to sin, but God can still accomplish good even through evil people. It was not okay that Abraham sinned in this way. There's no excuses. Mm -hmm. There's no justification. There's only Christ who is Abraham's justification. Christ bled for him. And then we get to say, God worked good here, even though it's not enough. And then we can take those things to our own lives and say, these are the places where I genuinely do want to struggle to, to improve, struggle to serve my neighbor. But also, if God were going to withhold his providence, withhold his mercy uh, from everyone who hasn't quite gotten there, nobody gets help. Yeah, and that's just depressing. <laughs> it, it's not only depressing, it's just not true. Um, it's It's... Not only, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous lie of the evil one to sort of say, if you do this, you will get that. Um, and, and if is one of the favorite words of imperfect people. Um, imperfect people love this word if because the devil teaches it to us. It, it's the very first word that the devil tempts Jesus with over and over and over again in the wilderness. And it's the very same thing that he'll dangle in front of us. And we'll either use it sort of a, as an as improvement scheme. So like, uh, I will stop having problems if I you know, study harder, if I train more, if I stop sinning so much. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful word if it were true, but it's full of doubt. And the other one we use it is, is to, to blame each other. And so like my day would have gone a lot better if you wouldn't have ruined it. Um, if is this, this awful word that just sort of dangles in front of us, the fact that we are not God, um, but we don't need to be. Yeah, that's, that's not our job. <laughs> we were, we were not called to be perfect. Jesus right. was I like, mean, we're called to be perfect, but called to be perfect in Jesus, not apart yeah, from exactly. Jesus. Exactly. And yeah. So when, when we recognize that, you know, can God work through imperfect people? It's, it's maddening when you're expected to actually receive good gifts from them. Um, so like, it's maddening to say, honor your father and mother when you realize that your father and mother are sinners and, and are wrong sometimes. Can God still work for them or, or work for them, but also through them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you see, like, of course, with Jesus and his own parents, like, he was born of the Virgin Mary, like, she wasn't a perfect person, and he still honored his father and mother, like, that's the example that everyone, and then the only problem I see with that example, though, that I'm, now that I'm saying it, is it's like, oh, be like Jesus, be a perfect kid, and then well, that kind of sets that expectation, but so let, let's, let's grab hold of a sinner then, um, because I, I mean, I can't say that. Be like Jesus, be a perfect kid, but also be like Jesus in that you are baptized into Jesus. And so where you're not a perfect kid, you're a forgiven one. Um, the the yeah. standards go, don't go away just because you don't reach them. But also if you are forgiven, you don't need them to. You are, you are a perfect kid because you are a baptized kid. That, that means no sin left none. Um, that, that means it's all put on Jesus until you are perfect. You have never, ever, ever disobeyed your parents or even thought ill of them in Christ your Lord. 
it's a wonderful miracle, this forgiveness bit. We should lean into it. Um, but but more, it, it's a recognition that when God sort of needs something to happen, he's going to sort of tug on the strings. There's this high priest named Caiaphas that's going to deal with Jesus later while Jesus is out there being perfect. Caiaphas is just sort of scheming and plotting to try a, to, 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 to pull a sneaky um, on everybody. So he has this, this nighttime trial. He, he, he wants to keep his power. And so he says, it is better that one man should die for the sake of the people. And all the Christians are like, yeah, actually, that, that sounds pretty good. Um, <laughs> he preached the perfect sermon while he tried to do an awful thing because God needed the perfect sermon preached. Mm -hmm. It didn't make Caiaphas's plans or intentions holy, but it God still worked through his words. Um, every once in a while, God will reach into creation and accomplish the things that he needs to, even where nothing good should come, good comes. Yeah, and that's such a comforting thing, too. Right. And, and so when we want to look for comfort, then the place to start is not where we are not enough, but where Christ has promised to be. And so when you're feeling like you don't have enough to do something, it's not just really believe in Jesus and then you'll just miraculously come in first. You'll, you'll get all of your hopes and dreams. It's not that. Sometimes you're still going to be a complete failure who has faith in Jesus. But it, the, the comfort isn't in the success. The comfort is in Jesus. If the comfort is only in the success, the only real comfort that you have is not needing Jesus. And that's not Christianity. I don't know what it is. Actually, I do. It's idolatry. Um, but if the comfort is in Jesus, then I get to say, where was Jesus working his greatest miracle? And that was when he was the least. That was when he was the last. That was when he was downtrodden and crucified. So if I feel just a little bit close to that, I can know that he bore that for me. And there he called me holy. And there he called me enough. And he'll get done what he needs to. Like he's God almighty. He also rose from the dead. And so if I got in a real tug of war with Jesus over who is going to get their way, I think he's going to win. Yep. I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> so can God work through imperfect people? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, that's all he's got. So mm -hmm. he does. That's a, that's a good place to leave it. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's good. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out with me and uh, we'll catch you next time in the drive school. All right. See you then.